Okay, let's get started by creating a new Google Analytics for account and property for our website. So if you go to google.com slash analytics, if you go to that page, it will bring you to this page right here. So if you already have an existing Google account, what you can do is just click on get started today and that's going to allow you to get started with Google Analytics 4 or you can sign into Google Analytics 4 if you already have a profile set up. Now I do already have a property set up so for me it might look a little bit different than it looks for you. When you click on get started today, what you are likely going to see is a page that looks like this one right here. Now if you already have an existing Google Analytics 4 profile, if we just go back really quick, I click on exit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the admin section of your existing Google Analytics 4 account. And through the admin section, what you can do is click on create account. So when you create an account, it's going to look just like this. So I'm going to set up a new account for my website. And so the very first thing is naming our new account. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do brickpop.com for my account name. Now we're going to scroll down here, account data and sharing settings. So this just depends on the options you want to give over sharing your Google Analytics data. Um, I generally just share everything, but we'll click on next now. Okay, next we're going to create a property. So our property name could be exactly the same as our account name, and I'll show you why that matters in a minute. Um, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, and you can create separate properties for different websites, or if you have an iOS app, or if you have an Android app. So in this case, we're doing this for brickpop.com, our website. So we're going to name our property the same as our account, and then our reporting time zone, you just want to set for your local time zone. So for me, I am currently in New York time. So that's where my local time zone is. Currency will be US dollar. You don't need to worry about advanced options because universal analytics properties are no longer collecting data. So we're gonna click on next here and next is going to be describing your business. So now what you need to do is select your industry category. So for mine, it's going to be hobbies and leisure and then your business side size as far as how many employees your business has. So for mine, it's just going to be small and we're gonna click on next. So next you wanna choose your business objectives. So generally what I recommend doing here when you're choosing your business objectives is just clicking on get baseline reports. So just get started by clicking get baseline reports. You don't need to add all of these other options here. We're just gonna click this one at the bottom and click on create. So now the Google Analytics terms of service agreement, we need to make sure we accept the uh, data processing terms here as required by the GDPR and additional terms applic applicable to data shared with Google, I accept also need to accept the measurement controller controller data protection term so accept that as well make sure we accept all of our terms and now we want to start collecting data so it's really that simple to actually set up your Google Analytics 4 property so what we can do now is we're going to choose a platform we're going to choose web here obviously if you're setting up an Android app or an iOS app you would choose a different platform but for the most part most people are choosing web for their website when you set that up for the first time so next we're gonna set our website URL, so HTTPS, and ours is brickpop.com. Stream name, we can name, again, the same exact thing as our other ones. So we have brickpop.com for our stream, for our property, for our account. Enhanced measurement, you wanna make sure you enable enhanced measurement here. So this is gonna show that it's already gonna be measuring page views, scrolls, outbound clicks, site search, video engagement, file downloads, and form interactions. So you might as well measure all of these, even if you're not planning on having any file downloads or forms on your website, there's really no downside to using enhanced measurement and make sure you're measuring everything right when you set up your stream. So when we set up this, it's called a stream. So this is called our web stream. So it's a little bit different terminology than previously, but at this point we are ready to install Google Analytics 4. So our property is completely set up. So instead of installing it right this second, we're gonna click on the X, we're gonna click on the X again, and what we're going to do is we're just going to come back over here to, or if we come over here to next, and we're going to continue to home. And what we want, I just want to show you accessing your account. So in your Google Analytics 4 account, so I set this one up just as an example. This is the one I'm currently using. Probably going to end up switching over to this one. You'll actually see the old Universal Analytics property here. Um, but this is our current run right here. So you're going to see Analytics accounts, and then this is our properties and our apps. So brickpop.com, we know it's a web stream because obviously we have the .com there. So now what we need to do is actually install Google Analytics 4. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to install Google Analytics 4 using Google Tag Manager. So I'm going to install Google Tag Manager and then I will install Google Analytics 4 on our website. I am doing this for a WordPress website, but you can also do this for other websites as well. So if you're using a different CMS, different website builder, you can kind of follow along with this. You're just gonna to have to put your code in different areas. So you're just gonna to have to know how to edit your website. So you may have to just look at 
where do I put this Google Tag Manager code so that I can install Google Analytics 4 as well. So we get started here in Google Analytics 4. We have our account property all set up and ready to go. Where we want to go is Google Tag Manager. So you can go to tagmanager.google.com. And if you don't have an account already, what you want to do is create a new account. Very, very simple to create a Tag Manager account. All you need to do is click on create an account, name your account, set your country, container setup. So enter your container name here. So you could do a brand name, you could do a website. Target platform is going to be web in this case. And then you're going to have to click on create. When you click on create, accept the terms of service. And before you know it, you're going to bring be brought to a page showing you install Google Tag Manager. So it's a very simple process. You can create a Tag Manager account in about a minute just following those steps. Then it's going to say install Google Tag Manager. So we have to place these two pieces of code on our website. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our WordPress website and we're going to go to plugins and we're going to click on add new. So we're going to be using a plugin to install Google Tag Manager and then using Google Tag Manager to install Google Analytics 4. What you want to search here for the keyword is head footer post injections. Okay, so you'll see head footer post injections here and this is the plugin that we want to use. If we click on it, you can see what this plugin looks like. Very easy to see. So what we want to do is we want to install this plugin and we want to activate it. Okay, let's activate this plugin. Okay, and you can see we have our plugin installed here. So now what we want to do is we want to come over here to settings and under settings, you're going to see head and footer here. So we're going to click on head and footer and you're going to see head page section injection and then after the opening body tag. So what we want to do here through this plugin settings page is come back to our Google Tag Manager account, copy this piece of code, come back over and paste that first piece of code underneath the opening header tag. Next, what we need to do is copy this piece of code, place it after the opening body tag. So we have this copied, come back over after the opening body tag on desktop and on mobile, select mobile here. So now just doing this and clicking on save, we now have Google Tag Manager, the two pixels we need to add to our website, added to our website properly. What we need to do next to actually complete our installation of Google Tag Manager is come back over here. We need to go to our workspace. So you're gonna click on workspace here. We All we did was we added those pieces of code to our website. And now what we wanna do is click on submit. So you need to submit your workspace to complete your installation. So under version name and description, what we can do is add GTM to BrickPop. And we could just do this for both and click on publish. Okay, so now if we come back over to our website here, and I'm on just the home page of my website, I am using the Tag Assistant Legacy Chrome extension. This is created by Google. Add this to your Google Chrome, and then you're gonna see it right up at the top here. So you can click on your little extensions plug puzzle piece here. Make sure you pin it to the very top so you can always see this. If we come over to our website and I click on it, I haven't refreshed the page yet. You can see we have no tags right now. So we're gonna refresh the page. And now what you're gonna see over here is we have one tag added. Now, if you have the same issue where it's showing red and showing one error and the error is invalid or missing account ID, you can see our account ID is right here. This is basically just a faulty error. So if you see this error, don't worry about it. It's because this is longer than six digits. So if yours is only six digits, you won't see this error. If it's longer than six digits like mine is, like longer than six letters and numbers, then you'll see this error like I'm seeing right now. Do not worry about this error. Your Google Tag Manager is installed properly. So this is really just an issue with Google Tag Assistant. It's not a perfect Chrome extension, but it's a really good one for seeing our tags on our website. Our account ID is right here, so we don't need to worry about an invalid or missing account ID. It is not invalid or missing. So what we want to do next is we want to come over to our Google Analytics 4 account, and we're going to go to the admin section for Google Analytics 4. To install Google Analytics 4, you're going to go to Data Streams, and then you're going to see your web data stream right here. So we're using our web data stream. No data received in our past 48 hours because we don't have it installed yet. So we're going to click on the arrow. It's going to open up our web stream details. Scroll to the bottom and you're going to see view tag instructions. So I always like to show this because it's helpful to view tag instructions because it's going to detect what type of website builder you're using, CMS you're using. And Google Analytics 4 will actually give you options for installing it. Now we are doing this more manually, so we're not doing it in this method where we're just taking this piece of code. We're gonna be using Google Tag Manager. So you can use one of these other plugins as well. There's a lot of different ways to install Google Analytics 4. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to scroll to the top. So we're in our web stream details. So again, clicking on admin, data streams, and then we're gonna click on the arrow right here through our web data stream. And what we need is our measurement ID. So I'm just gonna copy this measurement ID right now. We're gonna come back over to Google Tag Manager we're gonna go back to our workspace here 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new tag. So click on add a new tag here. Under tag configuration, what we're going to do is select the Google Analytics GA4 configuration. So we can name this here. So we're going to do GA4 configuration. And then under triggering, actually, we're going to stay here first. And under our measurement ID, this is where we're going to paste our measurement ID. So the measurement ID that we got right here is what is going to go in this field. So GA4 configuration tag, measurement ID right here. Don't need to set anything else up at the top. Just keep this all exactly as it is. Go to triggering and under triggering, we're going to choose all pages. So we are basically saying Google Tag Manager, we want you to install Google Analytics 4 on every page on our website and make sure that you're tracking everything that's happening on every page of our website. Click on save. Last but not least, we need to submit our workspace again. So what we could do is say added GA4. Version name and description are really for anytime you're making changes. It's much better in an organization where a lot of people are making changes to kind of describe, here are the changes I made when I went into Google Tag Manager. So now we have this all published and everything. We're gonna come back to our website. We're gonna refresh this page again. Again, we just have our one tag at the top here. Okay, I had to open up a new web browser for this actually to show in this tag assistant. But what you're gonna see is we have the little two up top here. We're on our homepage still. If we click on the little two, still giving us the same error with Google Tag Manager, invalid or missing account ID, but we have our global site tag now installed. So this was all installed with Google Tag Manager. So we've installed Google Tag Manager, we've installed our global site tag. So really that simple to install both. And now we have Google Analytics 4 on our website, completely installed. As long as you never delete the head footer and post injections plugin, assuming you never remove these pixels from the head footer and post injections plugin, as long as you just never remove this tag from your tag manager account, you will always have Google Analytics 4 installed on your website properly using this method. So if you have any questions at all about installing Google Analytics 4 with Google Tag Manager, please leave in the comment section. Thank you for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.